I've known in my heart for a very long time that I need to go to the Holy Land. My mother's father had always proudly affirmed that he was a true black Judean. This journey was an ancestral calling to rectify the fallacies that have been perpetuated about this biblically historic land, its region, the people who claim to be its original inhabitants, and the people who have in fact lived on the land for generations upon generations. I am Sar Madiel Ben Yehuda. Sar means minister. My title in the community, my role as minister, my portfolio is that of information. I'm charged to collect, to analyze, and then to disseminate information about the Hebrew Israelites here in uh, Israel, about our particular uh, history as a community and our history as a people uh, connecting back to this land. Uh, we consider Israel to be Northeast Africa. We are living here in the southern portion of Israel in what is known as the Southern Judean Mountains. And uh, of course, we have to make this clear that, that Israel uh, predates any uh, Palestinian uh, connections here to this land. When you look at the name of Palestine, it was the name that the Romans gave to the land formerly known as Judea. Now, I didn't say Jewish or uh, Judaism, but Judea. So the Judeans were the people that actually lived in this portion of this land prior to the, uh, it being named Palestine by the Romans. So this is what we consider to be Northeast Africa. We are sitting on the African tectonic plate. There are African species of birds and animals and, and plants that you'll find all throughout this region. Why I took you here is that I want to show you that the country called Israel is sitting on the African tectonic plate. It's like all continents are sitting on a plate, okay? Mm -hmm. And these plates, sometimes they slide, in, you know, and they rub one another and see, and what happens, that's what happens when earthquakes happen, the plates begin to slide among one, uh, one another, and if you get a crack in one of the plates, magma will come up, you know, like a volcano. Mm -hmm. a, a magnum would come up and it will cause, you know, uh, great devastation because of the volcano, but it's because of the shifting of these tectonic plates. Uh, without question, we are in Northeast Africa. We are landlocked to Egypt with the exception of the Suez Canal, which was a man-made uh, ditch, a boundary now. Uh, between, in fact, it's not even really a boundary anymore since uh, Egypt has reclaimed the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, but nevertheless, even those of us who are Pan-Africanists in our thinking and Afrocentric, we forget and we leave off that portion of Northeast Africa and, and, and don't want to claim anything beyond that. Of course, Afro, uh, Afrocentrists are still fighting tooth and nail for Egypt to be included as a part of Africa because most Egyptologists and anthropologists, archaeologists of the Eurocentric persuasion will say that uh, Egypt is in Africa. They had to concede that, but then they still draw the line by saying that uh, they weren't Africans like that. In other words, they weren't dark-skinned people. And of course, this is all part of the great deception. And the reality is that if they give up Egypt, ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet, if, if they give that up and say that that was a part of black Africa, then they will also have to give up Israel. And that's why they draw the line at Egypt, because if they give up Egypt, they've got to give up Israel. Now, we're going to go over here, and I'm going to show you where Israel sits on the African tectonic plate, which means that Israel is Northeast Africa. Now, when we look at this map, this is, the, this is the Sinai, okay? This is the Red Sea. This is Egypt. This is the Sinai. This is Israel. All right, this is Saudi Arabia over here. Now, if you see this in Hebrew, it says Haluak Afrikani, the African plate. Here it is right here. Israel is sitting right here. Israel is sitting on the Haluak Afrikani, which means that Israel is Northeast Africa. 
there is no uh, there is no Middle East area. If you sit here in Israel, you have a border with Egypt. So Egypt is in Africa. So how I can say this is Middle East? Uh, to me, it's uh, Africa land. Blacks from Africa back to home, and also from Africa, from here, we've been there. And uh, also, for most of the blacks, they have a confusion about Israel. This is your home. This is your land. This is Africa. This is Africa. The Europeans, I mean, because we know the Europeans classify this as the Middle East. But this is Africa. This is Africa. This is north of Africa. Now they make Libya and um, Morocco and Tunis. They say it's North Africa. It's West. <laughs> the West. We are in the North. This is the Mediterranean Sea right here. So, people say, well, why do you say it? But it's Asia Minor. You know, when Europeans be talking about this Asia Minor, I ask them, where's Europe Minor? Where's America Minor? Okay, this is the only <laughs> continent with a minor. And you know what that minor is? It's a minor lie. It's really a major lie. <laughs> Understand what you're talking about? Some Asia minor. Where's Europe minor? Where's America minor? But see, when they say Asia minor, they don't have to classify this land as being part of the African continent. And they want to call it the Middle East. The middle of what? We've done a great job in being able to demonstrate that that this is Northeast Africa. And once we begin to look at it as such and we stop believing this idea of Israel being a part of the Middle East. What do you mean Middle East? Is there an Upper East, a Lower East? What, what do you mean Middle East? It's a geopolitical term that the British, our good friends the British, that they uh, used during their reign and their uh, uh, dominion which has long since passed, the, long, the sun has long set on the British Empire, they no longer rule the seven seas, but they, in their world, in their worldview, they called this region the Middle East, and it made sense in that perspective, because going to their east, when they got as far as they could to their east, and they, they call that the Far East, and to this day it's still called the Philippines, China, Asia, or Far East Asia, whatever. So, when you look at going to those regions and passing through this region, passing through Syria, passing through Israel, passing through Egypt, passing through Afghanistan, Iran, etc. It made sense according to their worldview to call this the Middle East. It was the middle of their East. But no longer will a geopolitical term suffice for what we're saying is geological and geographical truth. Europeans! classified this area as a Middle East. You know, and then since this is the Middle East, the other question, where the Middle West? Where the Middle North and where the Middle South? They don't have no geographical terms like that. And the only reason why they use that term, Middle East, because it disconnects the proper connotation that should go with describing this land geographically. So, to me, what I understood also, I learned in Ethiopia, what is the geography of Africa and Middle East, automatically I feel like Africa. So even now, after 22 years, I saw the culture, I saw the uh, meal, you know, most of... There is no Middle East culture. All of these things came from Africa and also from this culture or originally from here, from this land, from Jerusalem. And uh, now uh, to, to see the things properly Africa, not Middle East. So, let the truth speak for itself. It's not my interpretation. Here it is in Hebrew. This is written in Hebrew. And in Hebrew that says... This says, Luaka Afrikani, the African tectonic plate. That's where Israel is sitting on. I want to say I'm sorry that my English is not so good, but <laughs> I will try, you know, to explain or to 
to teach the people, the people that don't know that we are here in this land before uh, maybe uh, maybe more in uh, 2000 of year in this area uh, in Sinai desert it's, uh, it's not far from here, it's near the Jordan Israeli border there is our land, my land, my grandfather's land so uh, so before, you know, before maybe, before the, the state of Israel, the border of this Israel or Palestine is not in this, in this border today. It's very near, before it's El Arish. El Arish in Egypt today, there is the border of this, the Holy, the Holy Land. This is the religion thing. So many people they don't know that uh, the black people here in this land, it's, it's not uh, for the last hundred years or something like this, it's more than uh, a thousand of years. from Africa. He's from Africa. Our Saba and I know Esir Dorot. Esir Dorot, ten generations here. Bobby, this Israel, Haita Palestine, Haita. Before the Palestinian, before the Turkish Empire, his people was here. The original people here, it was black. I know about the hostel of Beni Hilal. Uh, I know about the Zir Salem uh, history, everybody knows this. Uh, most of the, the Bedouin here, most of them, they come from the Arab Gulf. Uh, they know. They, they can know they, they're not original here. They know that we are the original uh, people here in this land. The evidence is hands down. Uh, it's not even something that we engage in a debate on about the, the dark-skinned uh, nature of the peoples that lived in these regions in antiquity. The reality is that we tend to look at this land based on what we've seen in contemporary times. And what do we see? Uh, we see uh, fair-skinned Israelis, and we see fair-skinned Arabs. I'm here, originally here for a thousand years. But the other tribes, I won't talk about the Bedouin. The other tribes here, all the Bedouin here. Other black Bedouins? Not the black, even the white. Even white Bedouin. Not the Bedouin, there's no white Bedouin. Yeah. Bedouin, all, all black. black. It's, it's not like me. Yeah. Little lights, like, uh, like yeah. light, light between, skin, between yeah, white between. and uh, yeah, mixed. all this tribe you see the Bedouin here. Yeah. You tell them, yeah. this will tell you I'm from Arab Saudi, the original. This tribe will tell you, yeah, I'm from I'm from north of Jordan. Everybody will tell you it's it's he's not original for for in this land. He he came, not me. But you came. Did you originally? They came. They, they came. came. But, but you, me, yeah. I say I'm here. So they have to be clear if you discuss with them, okay, they say, all of you come here, okay? Who was living this this land? They say it's a black man. The black man. And before maybe 2000 and a half, there's a Hebrews. The, the Hebrews. Hebrews. The Hebrews were black as well, right? Yeah, there was Hebrews. In this land, there was just the Bedouin, the black Bedouin like me, and the Hebrews. That's it. One of the things that uh, we have to understand is that uh, Sheikh Aid, men like Sheikh Aid and, and others who are the Afro-Bedouins, the Afro-Palestinians in this land, many of them are actually the original peoples of this land. When you go back to the earlier Zionist thinkers, and I'm going all the way back to Ber Berokov, um, who was the, the theoretician of the Zionist left, that he actually referred to them as most probably these uh, uh, people that were living in the land prior to the establishment of the state, that they were most probably descendants of the earlier, uh, early Judeans and the early Canaanites. And of course, the Canaanites were an African people, uh, sons of Ham. We are deeply rooted in this country. We are talking about generations and generations and generations. For example, the picture which I have over here, now look at the picture pretty well. The man holding the rope of the camel, the man holding the rope of the camel is the Khalifa more than Qatar. He's the third man after Prophet Muhammad. Khalif Ma? Khalifa Umar bin Qatar. Umar. When he came to Jerusalem, look at the 
one who is writing they can read the brother. You can say we began when the Islam came to Palestine, but I'm quite sure we are even before and before and before. The Israeli author Shlomo Sand in his book, The Invention of the Jewish People, between the pages of 184, 188, he goes into great depth talking about the early Zionist thinkers like Ber Borokov and even David Ben-Gurion. Uh, he quotes David Ben-Gurion and Ben Svi, Yitzhak Ben Svi, talking about the fact that the early Judean peasants were actually the foundation of what the uh, what they encountered when they came into this land. This is a book they wrote 30 years prior to the Declaration of Israel's Independence, and they recognized that the Fellahim, this peasant class, were actually those that had remained here, that had converted perhaps to Islam, that had converted perhaps to Christianity, depending on the ruling class, depending on the, the armies at the time that held Jerusalem and held this particular region. They simply, in their love for the land and the fact that these armies needed to be fed, they became the peasant class, the agrarian uh, agronomists, the agriculturalists who continued to raise their crops and to take care of their families in a desire to stay on this land. Many black people, they was here in this, in, in this land. Mm -hmm. I see, for example, I want to tell you mm -hmm. that thing, mm -hmm. that the history is in the history before maybe uh, 2000 year, something like that. There is in this area was was a black tribe is called Beni Hilal. Then they say uh, Zaid Al Halali. Everybody know. Everybody in all the Arab wars. If you saw you you, you saw you you so strong you did. They say what you are Zaid Al Halali. He was a very brave black man. Very strong. Very very rightness he like a, the right he know the truth he fight here in this land everybody know from the history even today in our tribe they they remember this man i have a book called the arabs uh, i believe the author's name was bertrand uh, thomas uh, on page 339 he says the the original inhabitants of arabia were not the more familiar arabs of our own time but a very much darker people now, why would you write a book on the Arabs and then tuck that little sentence away on page 339 talking about the original people? It's, it's obvious that, that certain historians and anthropologists have something that they want to hide or that they don't want out front. And of course, the color of the uh, people of this land in antiquity, that's, uh, that's what they don't want to, to be known. Even today, you see uh, most of the blacks, because the world's uh, the war in, in, the, in the here in the Middle East in the last maybe a hundred year or two hundred year, uh, the some of them, some of my family today, there is in Egypt, some of them in Jordan, some of them in the Palestinian Authority, and they know the original. They say we are, we are from this Negev, this this area. See, we are the same family. There is in Jericho too. We are in the same family, we originally we, we live here in this land, but you know, a policy or political or... Uh, uh, and we, we don't care that, that we are not new here. But you know, the government before uh, the Turkish people come here, they control this, this land for 400 years and they left. And we, we, we stay in the desert. Then the English, uh, the government of uh, English people, they come here, maybe control uh, some uh, of a little time, and they left, and we stay here, and now it's the Israeli, and we stay here, and we could continue to stay in this land, and uh, uh, don't, uh, we, we try, you know, to let the people know that that's that's you know everybody new one come here with the power with the the the, the gun with the muscles with this this is this is my my land but people they have to know the truth if you have the truth you have the power you have to be strength you have to be to know that's like i'm saying everybody here if you not have no right you will go i will stay here 
for a thousand of year uh, uh, in the in the future. Thank you.